Hello everyone, welcome to my new video. I left Georgia for Turkey, but only for three weeks. And today I would like to talk to you. Recently, I posted a video called Are Russians Discriminated Against in Georgia? And I got a lot of comments that I wanted to reply to. And also many people asked me about the uh, protest that happened in Georgia, about the law against foreign agents. And I also will talk about that. It is really windy here, that's why I will be holding my coat like this. I'm in the city called Çeşme. This is the Turkish flag. And there is the beautiful sea, Black Sea or I suppose something else. There are gorgeous fortress walls. But anyway, let's start. So recently I made a video about the discrimination of Russians and why I'm putting it in the quotes, because discrimination is a really high word for this. In that video I told you about what happened in my month and uh, one situation that I mentioned there was the situation with a man in a restaurant that abused me and my other female friends for the fact we did not want to talk to him and that we did not smile to him. It was a classic situation when a disrespectful man behaves towards women. I said it in the video that it's just misogyny, it has nothing to do that we are Russians. And I don't want to state this situation as the example of me somehow being discriminated by Georgians. But I also got comments from people who blame me for showing Georgians from the bad side, that not all Georgians are like this man. But of course I know, of course this could happen to me in any country and will happen because I'm a woman. And later in that video I told about another situation when me and the girls went to Batumi and a Georgian man told us that we should not be enjoying life in Batumi, mocking us for living our peaceful life in Batumi while there is a war going on. And it was the only, the only encounter like this that I met in Georgia. Yeah, I also see graffiti on the streets, but that's it. Of course, I don't want to complain because this, it is what it is. and it was a noisy car in our video. So, now I would like to talk about the law against foreign agents that the Georgian government recently tried to impose, but Georgian people protested for several days. Finally, Georgian people managed to fight back. The law was canceled by their government. There were protests and I did not go to them because first, it's not my right to demand something from the Georgian government and also because I was just scared what if this somehow can uh, affect my status in Georgia. I'm a tourist in Georgia, like I'm a tourist who can stay there for one year, but I went there only when the law was already cancelled. And still, even when it was cancelled, many people went to protest because they also didn't believe that it is that easy. So I went there on the third day and now I want to show you something footage from there. So the rally has been going on for three hours already and there are still many people. I am impressed by how many people are here. Many people ask me about this, so yeah. So basically what this law was about, it was called a law against foreign agents or foreign influence, something like this. And essentially it really looks like the law that was created in Russia in 2013 and the law that has been gradually killing the Russian activists, NPOs and in general civil society. How it was in Russia? First they said, no, we just want NPOs to be transparent about their funds to show who they get money from. But it's not like this. In Russia that law affected different organizations. The organization that helped women who escaped from the domestic violence, like the 
shelters, organization for the LGBT that help LGBT people to escape from the dangerous regions of Russia and psychological support to the LGBT people of Russia. So all the stuff that I like basically was suppressed in Russia for the last years. And some education centers like the ones about Stalinist repressions, crimes of the Soviet Union. Organizations like this also were silenced by this law and it is really dangerous. And that was going to be in Georgia as well. That's why Georgia people call this law the Russian law. Basically that is what I understood, but I don't want to speak for the Georgian people. So I'm really asking you to not only rely on my words, but also to talk to the Georgians or read Georgian media. I am especially feel kind of out of place here because I know that many people at that protest would be disagreed with my presence on that protest because the chance they said against the Russian occupation, against the Russian law, and here me, Russian standing there and hearing this all. Well, they spoke in Georgian, but I understand something like Rusuli, Akupatsia, and so on. Also, I want to say that seeing how Georgian people protest, what chance they have, made me realize one thing. It was like, wow, it is so different. So in Russia, when I protested against the government, and yes, I tried to do this like in 2020 when there were protests for the government of the Khabarovsk region, Sergei Furgal, who was arrested illegally because Putin just wanted to remove him. And when I protested the next year for Navalny, who was poisoned and then put to jail, I protested against the Russian government, against my government. But people in Georgia protest not only against like their government, but also against the government of Russia, of some other country. And I'm trying to put myself into their shoes shoes it's like if i living in spask protested not only putin but also influence of china or i don't know if i lived in st petersburg i would protest putin and influence of finland so this brings the whole new perspective to realize how georgia is so vulnerable because russia influenced them for so many centuries and is still influencing them and now i understand all that not even fear but suspicion that they have towards russians and it's unusual for me to imagine that the thing that i protest doesn't only come from my government but also from government of other countries and it shows how long the georgian society have been fighting for it and as much as i am glad for georgians i am also sad for myself because well Georgian people are fighting their fight they will win eventually but it's not my fight it's not my homeland and I want to talk about the feeling of home I started feeling that Georgia is my home especially when I left it so I was flying to Turkey and on the plane I heard announcements in Turkish English and Georgian it was so precious for me to hear announcements in Georgian even though I also don't understand it and I understood that I love how the Georgian language sounds I love these intricate letters they are just beautiful and Georgia is not my motherland but I feel such a compassion and it's so tiny well compared to my measures so cozy and the way they were welcoming to me like many small details that I started to appreciate about Georgia and yes I lived there for six months and partially can call it my home not Russia because you often send me comments like Natasha I'm so sorry that you had to leave your motherland but in fact I am not sorry that I had to leave Russia well Spask I lived there until 18 then I lived in Khabarovsk where I studied I did not have time to live in Moscow because then the war started maybe if I lived in Moscow more I would like it more and have some roots there but no I don't have anything left in Russia it is a really great feeling because I know many other Russians who left the country and they have their families they have to take care of or jobs or children who studied in the school and so on and so forth so Russia is definitely not and I'm totally okay with not calling Russia my home, but also Georgia, they will fight eventually. And I would love to be able to do the same in Russia, but I cannot. I'm scared to return to Russia. And when I say that I'm scared, I mean not only fear in my head, but the real risk. In my videos, I already said so many things that sued the Russian criminal code. I already discredited the Russian army, spread fakes about the actions of the Russian 
army, spoke badly about Putin, compared him to Hitler, to Nazism, all that stuff. So if the FSB or whoever is doing this find my videos, it will be that easier. I don't know, maybe it's already a criminal case on me, or maybe I'm in some list and when I return to Russia, they will find my name and arrest me. I don't know. <laughs> That's why I kind of don't have the opportunity to go back to Russia. I cannot make a Schengen visa. All the people told me I can do this in Armenia. I cut the opportunity to go back to Russia, but I kind of don't regret it. The other thing that gives me hope is that all that uh, policemen are just not well educated to know English. That's why I am just a small fish for them. Their first priority is to buy the Russian-speaking journalists, political activists, not me. And now I want to return to my previous video and the comments I received. One of the common comments was what did you expect as a Russian? Of course people will be negative towards you. I got many comments like this and yeah, I didn't expect anything else because I understand all the pain and trauma that the Russian government did to Georgia and to many other countries and the prejudice that comes with it towards all Russian people. So I'm not even trying to argue with that. But here I want to draw your attention to this very different position that we are looking at this from. You probably don't follow many other Russian YouTubers and don't read uh, Russian anti-war media and you see me among all the other Z people who support the war and the Russian government. While I'm looking at you like at the world from my group from my information bubble of Russians who are anti-war like we go to protests in Belize we organize charities for the Ukrainian refugees we do something to fight the Putin's regime because we cannot do this in Russia so that we do it where we are now and I meet so many people with the same values so that I even forgot that the Z people exist I definitely don't associate myself with the Z pro-war people and I believe that it is not 80% of the whole Russian population who support the war. Because this number comes from the social polls that you also cited in my comments. But <laughs> these polls come from the official governmental sources of Russian government. And we have to understand that the response rate is really low. So really few people even agree to talk to the pollster and to say their position. One more popular comment was, but Natasha, you're a minority. All the other people in Russia support the war. No, I am not a minority. I am a privileged person who managed to left Russia thanks to my income from YouTube. And because I know English, I always was ready to leave Russia and wanted to go to another country. Putin has been killing the free independent media, NPOs, even the opportunity to gather for a protest. He has been killing this for 20 years of his rule. That is why people are so apolitical. But not all of them, there are still people who are trying to fight. And I'm sure you heard about that famous cases when a girl drew an anti-war drawing. Her father was arrested. Now the girl is in the orphanage, which in Russia it's like prison. Like I met people from there and I'm really sorry for the conditions there. So her father was placed to jail. Recently he tried to escape, but he was detained in Belarus. You can watch about this. It is all really indicative of what is happening in Russia. I also want to note that everything that I'm saying now is not addressed to Ukrainians. I cannot even understand their pain and what they are going through. I don't have a moral right to even complain to them like, oh, don't hate me, I'm a good Russian. And when I read the news that come from Russia, or the news about another missile attack of Russian troops to a Ukrainian city. It's definitely not good to read this, given that I live my peaceful life. I am privileged to be able to move, to travel, to buy food, coffee. And in Russia, every institution, a school, a university, a hospital is built like a prison. That's why I feel so sorry when I remember that I had to go through all of this and now I don't feel that Russia is my home. I, on the contrary, feel this resentment. It is a very thick, black, viscous thing and it goes like this from my chest and I'm trying to pull it out but it stays there and I'm trying to get rid of this completely. It is how I can visualize what I feel about how my country 
treated me, how I was able to promote my country, but how the country thanked me back, and actually how I even created this channel. In 2018, I created it and it was even called differently. It was called Yeah Russia, although I never liked that name, but it was supposed to be a channel about the Russian language, the Russian culture, like I made videos about the Russian New Year, and I hope I somehow worked for destroying stereotypes and improvements of uh, international relationships and I still think it is a great thing but with what Russia is doing now but the good thing is that I have no anxieties anymore I basically don't have any fear for my future because again I am in a very good situation like I have income from YouTube although probably can be taken from me anytime but so far I'm like well I really like Georgia I really want to live there a little bit and to explore other countries that I can visit it's a perfect situation for me I don't have anxieties about the future the only anxiety that I have actually comes from my past and from my memories and it's not an anxiety it's like it's a grudge resentment disgust and sometimes this pain is returning but I know that I will fight it. Me and other Russians who are against the war will continue doing what we can do. Thank you so much for watching this video and thank you for your support and for your sympathy. Let's make this world a better place together. Goodbye. Пока-пока.